What's crack, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to this video again. I'm filming it for the second damn time. I filmed it for 11 minutes, 12 minutes, however long it came out to. Sent it over to fake intern Tony. Fake intern Tony hit me with some fucking fake intern shit. I said, bro, you forgot to record audio. Forgot to record audio. How long have I been doing this for? It's like y'all pulling up to work without your fucking pants on. I just got to roll out of my bed, sit here, and talk to y'all. I forget to put audio on. <sighs> all right. All right. All right. All right. We're going to get through it, though. It's a quick week. It's not a lot of exciting names on the waiver wire. We're doing top five running backs to pick up on your waiver wire for week four of fantasy football. There's going to be another video dropping within the next couple hours for the top five wide receivers. And that's it. It was a really fucking good video, too. I feel like I nailed it. I feel like I was yelling a lot. But now we're not going to yell. We're going to tuck our shirts in. We're going to stop yelling. We're going to eat. <laughs> So the first name obviously up on this list is uh, this guy named Chuba Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun to say his name. First off, Christian McCaffrey. You might have heard of this guy, running back for the Carolina Panthers. He is hurt. He has hurt his hamstring on Thursday night football. Was the first game of Week Three. So Christian McCaffrey will be out probably from two to four weeks. All right, they didn't put him on the IR. If they put him on the IR, that means he's automatically out for three weeks. What this tells me is that they expect it to be anywhere from two to three weeks. It's possible that he still ends up being out for three weeks. It's possible he still ends up being out for four weeks, but they're holding out hope. Do you know why? Because unlike last year when Christian McCaffrey was hurt, they had nothing to play for, okay? So there was no reason to rush him back. This time around, while I still don't think they're going to rush him back because Matt Rule does not have a history of doing that with his players, they are playing for something, for a playoff spot. You know, talking about the fucking playoffs? Carolina, plus 110 right now to make the playoffs. Straight up. Straight up coin flip to make the playoffs. They're 3-0. and They are fighting for something. And I, you know, I'm happy for C-Mac, man. He's got a lot of good things going for him. He's rich as shit. He's really good looking. He's jacked. He's got a sexy ass girlfriend. Like, actually, you know what? Fuck that. I hope he don't make the playoffs after saying all that shit out loud. But I know he works hard, man, and I like to see good guys end up with good things, okay? I want him in the playoffs. And since they're 3-0, they're on their way there, and they need this guy, okay? But he's going to be out for two to three weeks now. What that means is Chuba Hubbard is going to take over as the lead back. Now, Chuba Hubbard is a rookie coming out of Oklahoma State, a little bit undersized, kind of slow, kind of a boring prospect. He had a huge year in 2019, I think it was, 2018, whatever, that he popped off for 2,000 yards. He reminded me a lot of Darrell Henderson a lot of Tevin Coleman, a straight line runner that's like a one speed cut back, okay? And I don't think that really matters because he's going to play a large volume role. When we look at what happened when C-Mac went down, this tweet per Dwayne McFarlane, Chuba Hubbard, after C-Mac left the game, snap 73%, long down and distance 100%, short down and distance 66%, two minute drill 100%, a lot of routes, a lot of targets, a lot of target share action there in Carolina. I think he's going to be inside probably that like RB 14 to 17 range in my rankings next week, next week. All right. So, so a mid RB two, he's going to get a lot of volume. He's not going to get the opportunity share like the 95% that C-Mac got in that backfield. They do have Royce Freeman. I think Royce Freeman probably takes somewhere between like six and eight carries. Uh, they signed Duke Johnson practice squad, not going to be a factor in this game or coming up in these games. Week four, they have Dallas week five. They got Philly week six. They got Minnesota. So no defenses to necessarily be afraid of chuba is obviously the number one waiver wire ad for the week if you have the number one waiver wire priority more than welcome to go run it up and use it on chuba hubbard fab wise here's what i'll say he's gonna c mac's gonna be back soon chuba's not the kind of guy that puts your team overboard right he's not the kind of guy that helps you win a league as soon as c mac is back there's no shot of chuba hubbard actually eating into the workload of c mac so you've got yourself a zero once c mac is back which is why i don't blow a load on a guy like this pause I don't blow my fab budget on a dude who doesn't have long-term upside, okay? I would even if you're wrong about Elijah Mitchells, about guys like that, I'd rather blow it on that cuz they actually give you upside of league winners, of someone that you can keep in your lineup as an RB2 for the long run. So if you don't own C-Mac, I'm probably not going to drop more than like $20 fab out of a $100 budget on a guy like Chuba Hubbard. If I own C-Mac, I probably I feel like a fucking idiot at this point for not owning my handcuff, but I probably want to throw down a significant portion of the fab I have left to secure yourself, to insure yourself for the remainder of the season. So I'd probably go in that, you know, 30, 40, 
if you want to get secure with yourself and make sure you, you lock up your guy 50 percent whatever you've got left on Shuba to back up C-Mac because it does seem like they like him it seems like they're going to run him into the ground he's not as good so he's not gonna have as many explosive plays but the volume alone should should get him into that top 15 range so you've got yourself a nice RB2 for a couple weeks that's what I'll say on Chuba Hubbard again Royce Freeman is not exciting uh I think I don't think he's going to have enough time in two weeks to to build out a role for himself that's fantasy relevant because he goes back to irrelevancy as soon as C-Mac is back as well to an even higher degree compared to Chuba Hubbard so no Royce Freeman for me Next up on the list, I mean, listen, if Cordero Patterson is out there, he's obviously a priority ad. If Sonny Michelle is out there, he's obviously a priority ad because we don't know how, how long Darrell Henderson is going to be out for. He looked good uh, against the Bucks. all things considered. One of the toughest run defenses, saw so like 25 opportunities or some shit like that. So Cordero, Sony are both rostered in like 70% of leagues, according to Sleeper. So I didn't really want to go into in depth on them. Next up is Mr. Peyton Barber, man. I said this in the live stream yesterday, but this man literally like turn back the clocks, okay? He didn't, like, turn back the clock to a time when Peyton Barber was a younger Peyton Barber. He literally, like, turned the clock so that he went off into an alternate universe. Like, he went from Peyton Barber to Tiki Barber or to Peyton Hillis or to Marion Barber. Anything that got him out of Peyton Barber is what he basically became on Sunday. 23 carries, 111 yards, and a touchdown. Five more targets, three receptions, 31 yards. So you're talking about over 140 yards from scrimmage, a touchdown. Was that 28 opportunities? Second highest career totals in any given game for Peyton Barber. I don't know when teams are going to learn, but like giving Peyton Barber feature workhorse touches like Washington, Tampa Bay, like it, it, it never it never equates to your team being good. But John Gruden, John Gruden cannot get enough of dudes that average three yards per carry that are tough, that fall forward. He can't do it. And Peyton Barber is that guy. They went out, signed Drake for top 15 money. Don't use him. So Peyton Barber's a guy, unless Josh Jacobs is back. Josh Jacobs is basically on the injury report with every single injury you could have on the lower hemisphere of your body. I would say he's 50-50 to play in week four. No idea what his status is going to be. He'll probably be limited at practice all week. He was in like the non-contact portion of practice for a couple days last week. So he's probably getting to the stage where he could play. If he's in the lineup, obviously, who gives a fuck about Peyton Barber? They play the Chargers next week. The Chargers have allowed the 10th most fantasy points to the running back position. Just not really ideal for Peyton Barber. You could throw him into your flex if Josh Jacobs doesn't play. I'm not really going to feel confident of it, but I feel like John Gruden is so into this. John Gruden has never been fucking hornier than seeing Peyton Barber get 25 five touches and he's like he's like a crackhead who got his first high and he can't wait to do it again so i would imagine paint barber gets another like 18 to 20 touches holy shit what is going on everywhere? Peyton Barber, yeah, like uninspiring flex play, obviously. Keep an eye on Josh Jacobs. Next guy is Zach Moss on this list. Moss is starting to get more and more involved. He's got three touchdowns over the last two weeks. He's He outsnapped Devin Singletary in this previous game, 44 to 34, running more routes, 26 to 23. However, a lot of it came in garbage time. The question you got to ask yourself is just, does, is Buffalo just going to live in garbage time? They live in garbage town. Are they going to live in garbage time? Because they're always up. They're always just up 30 points, it seems like, in every game they play which means if the garbage time running back is going to get most of the carries because they're always up, then he's the guy to fucking own. Although I do think <laughs> me and Jack Settlement are in a, a bid off right now for this B. John Robinson NFT. So one of one, the bid ends in 10 minutes. That's what that alarm was. And he just texted me and asked, how much am I going to have to pay for this fucking Bijan piece? I got to finish this video because I got to throw some fucking money down on this piece. Sorry. What was I saying? Yeah, it's a clear one-two committee. Moss seems like the guy to own. He was the guy we wanted in the offseason to begin with. He was the guy that we thought had more upside. He's got more size. He's getting all the goal line work. So regardless of what time in the game it is, Zach Moss seems to be getting the goal line work. He's starting to get more passing opportunity. Again, though, it's just not a team that really runs the ball a lot or lends itself to success at the running back position. So if I want to own one, it's Moss. I don't really want to own Devin Singletary at all, but I think it's just going to be a committee. Again, Zach Moss, maybe you could throw him into your flex. The next three, the next three matchups, though, are pretty fucking sexy for a fantasy running back. You have Houston in week four, you have KC in week five, and you have Tennessee in week six. So you could actually probably start Zach Moss in all three of those in your flex spot. So don't blow the fab on him. But if you want to throw like seven, eight bucks down on Zach Moss to secure a little flex play, 10 bucks if he's on your wire and you're desperate, I do not hate it. Talked about Royce Freeman before, kind of hate it. Michael Carter, kind of really hate it. Tevin Coleman was finally out for good. They started pushing him out the door. And then he had a, a, an illness that kept him out of game. I don't know when that fucking... If, if there's a way to miss a game, Tevin Coleman will find a way to do it. It lended itself to just Ty Johnson and Michael Carter being like the only two running backs that mattered in this game for the Jets. Unfortunately, no one mattered in the game for the Jets overall, so nothing actually mattered. A lot of people are going to look at the box score and say, oh, it's Michael Carter's time finally. He outcarried Ty Johnson 9-3. to But when you look at the rest of the numbers, Ty Johnson still leading the team in snaps 31-23. to 21 routes run compared to 11 for Carter. 
five targets compared to three for Carter. Yes, Carter got nine carries. Ty Johnson got three. It's just a backfield that people are going to continue to get excited about and talk about Michael Carter because he's a rookie and every rookie just gets an un, an annoying amount of buzz. And now he finally got more carries. But this this offense is unplayable. You can't. They're unwatchable. They're unplayable. They're un everything. They're unhinged. Okay. We want Adam Gase back. We want him back. That's what I'm hearing Jets fans all around New York. I just went to the grocery store. I see Jets fans over there, and they're doing fucking Adam Gase chants outside of Trader Joe's. The city's about to burn down to the ground, all right? That's all I got. I pray to fucking God my audio recorded. If my audio didn't record, I'm putting this up with no audio. You're just going to see me doing this for 10 straight minutes, all right? That's all I got for y'all today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Make sure you hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed, because we are dropping some YouTube shorts later two nights we are putting shit all over tiktok on instagram at bdge two underscores is our brand social handle everywhere i'm out of here i love you goodbye